Hello everyone, welcome to Ejaotep. Mm-hmm. Ejaotep. So good to see everyone. And May June 2023 is officially out. And I'm talking like Alpha teachers. And in a few weeks, in a few days from now, it's gonna be Alpha students as well. So I wanted to just use this opportunity to just get a hang of it because students are preparing for their earlier GCSE so that they can start preparation immediately. This is May June. 2023 um igcc ict the cost code is 0417 and this is variant 31 and in this video we'll be looking at the spreadsheet part okay so correlation to this is my first video so correlation to all my um local and international students for making the a stars and a's so correlation to you all um i'm very happy that a general tech was right there at a the time like this to help you guys sort your you know the misunderstanding of course and the confusion so let's get right to it okay yeah let's get right to it all right um so i'm just going to move down please note that the total mark for this paper is 70 marks and the instructions are very very important please go to the instructions they're very very important they are there for a reason please go to the instructions okay um this is evidence one okay um you know what i'm just going to create evidence one anyway uh, you have been supplied with the following source files um j31 weather the csv just one source file we, we've supplied with now the tax one is evidence document so i'm going to i'm going to create the evidence document and i'm not really sure if we're going to have a print screen on it but i'll just create the evidence document anyway okay so tax one evidence document so let's get right to it so the first thing i'm going to do now because this is i i just alerted from the Cambridge website um, i'm going to have to extract this uh, compressed file okay which is in zip in a zip file and i'm going to have to um, uh, extract it so what i will do is right here i'll click on it then right click on it and then click on extract all right i want to extract it so that because i want to work with it okay so i'm going to click on extract all and then right here of course you can browse the location in which you want it but me i i want it right there on my sort on the folder i've created for major 23 but if you want to do a different folder or probably you've downloaded it and it's your download folder and what in your document you click on browse and then you can be able to choose the directory in which you want it and then you select the folder and you're good to go okay so but what i want to do right now i want to extract it right here so i'm going to click on extract so there we have it it's been extracted and we have the folder available for us okay so i'm going to create this um source file right here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click there are two ways to do this i right click then click on new and then you can click on the microsoft word document okay so you can actually do that and once i've done that you have to look for the name you want to save it with and that says save this document in your work area as j2131 evidence underscore followed by your center number and candidate number so i'm just going to copy this please note that in your exam you will not be doing any form of copying and pasting because it will not be an electronic copy but a physical copy okay so i'm going to copy this and right click on it and um, paste it here then i'm just going to change the name um your center number okay i'm going to use um a n okay um 2023 a n 017 then 2023 it has been our culture and there we have it and if i open on this that has been done okay i think i have something here I'll just close this okay now in another alternative if you want to do it another way now it's still the same process all you have to do is let me close this is um right here on the windows icon you search for word and you click on it and then right here you can click on the blank document then click on file click on save as go to the folder you've created and you can actually save it here okay it's still the same process all right just show you another alternative 
if the first one is not more, is not comfortable for you or probably you don't have it or something okay so i have this here the next thing i'm going to do is to set up the next thing i'm going to do right now is to set up my page so to do that i'm going to click on the layout right on right here is is you find it right here in the menu tab layout then click on the page setup and go to margins right here and please ensure your matrix is in centimeter okay ensure your matrix is in centimeter not in millimeter or inches in centimeter i'm just going to make it two centimeters across um the paper has to be a4 and i think this is okay by me now don't worry about the measurement unit because it's already there once it's been set up and you can see it right there so it's there already and then click on home then i can increase the font size to 14. i'm going to both this here and evidence one evidence two evidence three evidence four okay it's just like four or five evidence not more than this and once I'm done with this, I'm going to save this. And yeah. So that is how you create your evidence document. Because we're going to use this um, in the course of this paper. Alright. Tax 2. Spreadsheet. You're going to create a spreadsheet to calculate and display weather data about three towns. Called Amata, um, Bichen, and Chesme. Okay. Chesme. Yeah. Chess mine, okay. Open and examine the file j31weather.csv in your spreadsheet software. Now, when they talk when, when they talk about opening and examining the file, it still means you have to open it to check it. Um, are you going to be working with this? Is this going to be a lookup file or whatever? And then you open and then you look at it. You take a look at, a closer look at it to ensure that every data um, in that spreadsheet is clearly visible. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open this file. I'm going to close it. Yes, remove it. I don't need it. And right here, I'm going to click right here between the column and the row. And in between A and B, I'm going to double click. Now, just a few things. Just a few things. One is the fact that this right here a is a column one is noted as rows so a um an intersection between your a and one or the column and row gives you what we call a cell this is a name box this is a formula bar okay this symbol right here that is moving right here is for highlighting however when it goes through this box here it changes to what a field handle please you need to know all this very 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 important these are called your ribbons okay very important all right so let's go ahead so now everything is clearly seen um so we can we have a lot to work with so it's fine all right save this as a spreadsheet with a file name weather underscore followed by your center number okay weather underscore followed by your center number underscore candidate number so they've given us an example which you have to follow so let's save it real quick so i'm going to just copy this I'll copy this right here copy click on file click on save as please use save as not save okay you want to keep a copy of it then I'm going to save it right here in the folder that I extracted it from which is highly recommendable and I'm going to paste right click and paste it I want to use the keyboard shortcut. that's fine and then I'll change this to my center number which is AN017. My candidate number is 2023. If you've been following my videos. Now, when you talk about saving it as a spreadsheet, a CSV is a text file. Okay? Saving that as a spreadsheet simply means that the saver's type is going to be an Excel workbook. Okay? It's going to be an Excel workbook. And then you click on save. That's all. Okay? You have actually saved this as a spreadsheet. All right. The next thing is place in the footer left align the automated file name with no file path they want to see the file name if you've actually saved it 
okay so now let's do that now what we're going to do right now is we're going to click on insert and then now obviously i'm using a small laptop but if she's using a big laptop obviously the ribbons are going to be clearly visible but now it's coincides and you will see it in the text group okay the headers of footers will be seen in the text group so i'm going to click on the text here header and footer and i'm going to click on go to footer if they said footer and i said left align so this is left align center align right align okay so center align they said uh, automated file name let's check quickly automated file name with no file part so the file name right here file name right here that's what they want with no file part so yeah and the next thing they want here is right align is your name center number and candidate number please your name your candidate details are very very important without it it's not going to be marked so please don't joke with it okay so my name Michael, ND, comma a n of my center number 017 comma candidate number 2023 okay so obviously if you're practicing with if you're doing this along with me which is highly recommendable um recommended is you use your school um, um center number and candidate number which makes it easy for you okay all right now once you're done with this let's check is there anything more no is i will click outside of it and once you've done that you have two ways to take it to the normal view right here you could click here to, to go to normal view or you go to your view tab in the menu right there and then switch it to normal now you get to see this when you are printing your work okay you see all uh, your headers and footers during the course of your printing okay all right that's two marks for that stress okay <laughs> all right all right um format rule 1 to 17 of the spreadsheet to look like this rule 1 to 17 of the spreadsheet now notice this i'm going to talk about the use the need of um when there should be a grid line when there should not be a grid line now whenever you see that the, the grid line is very thick in the paper it means there's a grid line and when it's very faint it means no grid lines okay so you need to know this it's very very important you know this so the first thing i'm going to do right now is i'm going to put the grid lines okay um put the grid lines here first now to put a grid line i'll click on my home now right here in the font group i'm going to click on all borders okay right here as well I'm going to put a grid line all borders now we have it okay so at this point we have done that okay now should you want to take out the grid lines right you click on view the internal grid lines and then you could take it out right and now if you look at it it's now looking to see if it's the same thing here that's if you want to do that okay Although when you print it, those um, grid lines are not going to show. This grid line right here that you check and you check will not show. Alright. Alright. Now the first thing for me. The next thing is. Um, let's look at Are there any instructions given? Yes, there is. Apply the formatting in row 15 to 17. Row 15. To 17 down to 73 okay cells in row in rows 1 and 13 row 1 and 13 must be meshed center line okay with a 16 point font as shown cells in range a6 to C11 must be merged as shown okay so we, it's, it's actually quite straightforward so let's actually do this all right so I have um, A1 to D1 let me just put this here A1 to I'm going to highlight it to D1 and click on home now under the alignment group 
I'm going to click on merge and center. Okay. That's the first thing. And um, what else? They said 16 points. Now the first size is 16. So I'm going to take this to 16. Now the next thing is what font? Is it a serif or sans serif? Let's look at it. Um, or is it just is it just Calibri? Um, okay, let's look at it. Okay, I think it's Calibri, guys. Yeah. Alright, let me bold it. Let's see. Yes, it's just simple Calibri. Let me see. Okay. It's going to be... Yes. It's just simple Calibri, guys. It's just simple. Look at the T here. And look at the F. Yeah, simple. Just simple Calibri. Alright. So we have this. Now the next thing is... Now the thing is... Um, let me see. Cells in cell must be merged as shown. Um... Specification was not given or what color to use. I want to be sure. It, no, it was not given to be used. Um, so I'm just going to go with. You know what? I will just go with. Um, Right, right here in the field. Just gonna go with this. Let's see. Okay. I think that's fine. Um. Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Now the next thing is. Let me see. Let me see if I can get something else. Mm, is it think this? Let me see. Between um, I'll go with these guys. Okay. Now the next thing is January is right here at the right. I think all of them here, right align. You see. Yes, and this is meshed six to eleven is meshed to a one to okay a six to c six. So they are meshed. So let's do that real quick. So meshed. Merged. Merged. Merge it. Now I've already aligned it to be right already, so it makes it easy for me. Okay, so we have this. The next thing is this is bolded and this is centered the line it is very important that we pay attention to this very very important okay i think we can reduce this a bit yes we can reduce this a bit so it makes it easy for us Okay, let's 
let's see how we can make this here make it 140 140 okay and 140 now I'm using the pixels if you can see I'm measuring it okay all right okay the next thing is for the town um, it's going to be the same thing as um, row one okay so let's do that so I'm going to I'm going to center line this now for the town for the town right there now this is meshed this is meshed this is meshed so I'm going to merge it okay I'm going to let me see so this is E so that's B to oh sorry B to D guys B to D right it's important you follow this b to d is meshed e to g is meshed that's e13 to g13 and um h13 to g13 Alright, so we have this. Now the next one is okay. No, before I do this, let's make the formatting. I think is sixteen. Let's not assume. Um, center line with a sixteen point font. Okay, it's going to be bold. It's going to be italicized. I'm going to add this here. The one I use, I think, is Daka twenty five yes now you can see that it's all coming to light right um the next thing is wrap text this is definitely a wrap text so let's do this so i'm going to highlight it then right here right i'm going to do a text wrap okay and um what else um center the line as well notice that all of them are all text wrap apart from dates so i have to make sure that they're all text wrap uh, yes okay yes. okay so they're all text wrap now notice that they are both centered aligned horizontally and vertically okay so this simply means i'm going to highlight it here right now i center aligned horizontally i'm going to make it vertically yes i hope we're having the fun of this guys hope we're having the fun of this and it's bold good and it's all coming back to life okay so nothing here we're not putting anything inside now notice that all the values are right aligned they said note they said apply the formatting in row 15 what's the formatting right aligned to 17 down to 73 so they're all right aligned so shift control arrow right arrow down and right align shift control then arrow right then arrow down okay let me do it again shift control arrow right arrow down to get it done so together and you can do you can apply your alignment right alignment 
Okay, what else? What else was observed? Okay, what else was observed? Let's look at it. Um, I want to be sure that um, so yes I think we we are done with this oh, let me see not this is wild wind not wide speed okay so this is going to be like this a bit yes wind speed sorry wind speed yes the knots I think this is a spot of a bit. Yes, it's fine. It's better. Now it's important that you format it to look like this. Remember to get your ten marks. So it has to be like this. Okay, um, no backdrops. Okay, so we have this. Okay, I think. Okay, I think this is looking good to go. Yes. And with that, we are done with our 10 marks. We are done with that. Okay, question 3. Right? Question 3. Print your spreadsheet showing the values. Print your spreadsheet showing the values. Um, make sure the page orientation is landscape. The content of all cells are fully visible and can be easily read. Okay, just showing the values, just putting it like that, showing the values. Okay. So let's just print it. Click on file. I'm going to highlight this. Click on file, click on print. The page orientation is landscape. So let's change the page orientation to landscape. Okay, so it gives us everything here. Content of all cells are fully visible and can be easily read rows and column headings are displayed so let's add that there are two ways to do that i can do no scaling or page setup so i'm going to use no scaling to do that custom scaling option go to sheets and then row and column heading should be checked so we have this okay now it's important that every of this is clearly visible so what i'm going to do is the fact that i'm going to leave it like this this is three pages and which is fine by me okay three pages which is fine by me so i'm going to leave it like this okay because everything is clear and visible okay so i'm just going to call this printout one okay please pre send your works to pdf it's very very important all printout first should be to pdf before you send it to the printer okay pdf makes it read only you're able to see how the work looks like before you actually send it um for the, uh, to the printer okay which will not be printed in hard copy so right here i'm using microsoft print to pdf which is readily installed on your laptop so you don't need any extension to do that then click on print i'm going to look for um, okay so right here 2023 and I'll call this printout one okay now at this point it doesn't really matter what printout you call it because you are not given specification you call it printout what the most important thing is um, the work is printed right and the right way question four Place in cells B3 to D3. Let's check it. 
B3 to D3, okay? Formula to calculate for each town. For each town, the average hours of sunshine for January rounded to one decimal place. I'm going to explain this. Now, there's a difference between round, round down, round up. In fact, they are all the same thing. The only difference is in the question. You need to know when they're telling you to round down. You need to know when they tell you to round up. You need to know when they tell you to round. Okay? It's very, very important. Okay? So, you don't use the round down when they're telling you to round. You don't use the round up when they're telling you to round down. It's very, very important. The formula matters a lot. Alright. So, in cell B3, the formula to calculate for each town. Okay? Average hours of sunshine for January. So, this is for right here. So I'm going to use the function average equals to average and this is what average does return the average arithmetic mean of its argument which can be what numbers or name array or references that contains numbers so average the set for what for each town the average hours of sunshine for January I'm just go through so this is for January for each town so I have this let me see they said for what son of sunshine okay of sunshine not rainfall no wind speed of sunshine the average hour of sunshine okay so I'm going to click here shift control hour down okay now that's the average hour right there okay so the average hours of sunshine rounded to one decimal place now to make it a one decimal place we're going to add the function called round okay now it rounds the number to specific numbers of digits so i'm going to click on the round and what am i rounding it to they said comma number of digits is one decimal place and there we have it. Now, it's important that we understand this, guys. It's important that we do understand this. Okay. Matter of fact, I'm going to make this right align. So, please, it's important. Okay. You need to understand how the whole formula works. You need to understand the process of understanding the question. Understanding the question because that is what we help you in special. Okay. So, I've calculated... Um, for each town, right? We just did for a matter. We're also going to do for others as well. So let's do for um, B chain. So we have um, equals to. Usually I will just repli uh, replicate it, but I just want to do it for the first one, and then I'll I'll do that for others as well. Okay. So we have average and um, B chain. The sunshine. Shift control L down. Okay, and rounded to one decimal place, so I'm going to use round. Okay, to one decimal place, comma one. Okay, for um, chess me, we have equals to average. Remember, it's for sunshine. Shift, control, out, down. And then you close your parentheses. Round it up. So, round. Comma, one. Okay, so we have this. You could, you could actually verify it. This is... E15 to E73 yes um, H yes B yes so we have B E H please in cell B4 
to calculate for each town the average hour of sunshine for February. Oh, guys, there is an error somewhere. Yes, yes. I, <laughs> I did for everything, guys. I did for everything. So, um, January 31st is here. So, I did for everything. It's fine. Um, what I'm going to do right now is... Okay, what I would do right now is this. Um, I'm going to do this. Then change it to... So, 31st of January is um, 45. So, I'll change it to 45. Okay, it's fine. 45. And we'll now we say, Joe, you selected everything. Okay, of course, I'm going to know that. <laughs> I'm going to see the error eventually. Okay, so 45. And this is also going to be 45. Now, you see that there's inconsistency. That's why this is showing it. Um, 45. and 45 so we have that um 45 so let's verify it again yes for 45 31st for 45 yes so that is correct Okay, uh, I'm going to ignore it because it's fine. This is E15 to 45. So, at this point, I will ignore it. Alright. Now, for February, right? So, we have equals to average. And I'm going to select from... This is why you have to examine your files, okay? Um, 1st of February, you wait so much, I didn't really say it. Um, 1st of February is right here. Shift, Control, out down to select to February 1st to February 28th. Yes. Okay. I'm going to round it down is it the same thing let me see rounded to yes i'm going to round it down round to one decimal place which is one digit equals to average i will do the same thing for here so for bchn that's for E, right? So for E, from 46 down, close it, okay, round. one digit okay equals to average for h so at this point we know already it's from 46 46 down to 73 close it All right, then round okay then one digit okay so we have this just want to be sure um, so we have B e h okay okay so that's it max 
so please is important right the error that was made here is sometimes it happens with you students you just rush in because there's a lot of data but then again it's important to always check even if you're done go back to check your work very very important okay question five place in cell d6 okay d6 right there to d8 okay formula to calculate the to total numbers of days what well, calculate the total number of days it rained in each of the three towns to calculate okay want to calculate the total numbers of days that it rained in each town so we're not looking for the sum we want to know the days numbers of days out of 31 days how many times did it rain okay how many times did it rain so let's get that done numbers of days with rain in amata so what we're going to use right what we're going to use now is we're going to use the count we're going to use the count they say to calculate to calculate total number of days that it rain in each of the three towns so let's use the count but let's look at let's look at um numbers of days it rained in three towns let's look at it rain four rain four rain four rain four rain four rain four now guys this is where you start asking some questions like mr Gerald. Why am I seeing zero, zero, zero in in the rainfalls? Why am I seeing zeros in the rainfalls? Mr. Joe, what is happening right now? Why am I seeing zero? Why am I seeing 1.6? Why am I seeing um, what else, 0 0.5? Now, let me explain. If you see zero, it simply means that it did not rain. Yes. Remember, zero means empty. Right? Especially if we're doing a statement, if this is not equals to zero, then display this, else make it empty. Zero simply means empty, right? So it simply means that if you're showing zero, it did not rain. And remember, if we're to count, if we're using count, like I proposed earlier, it's going to count the zero as rain four. But zero is it, it didn't rain and 0 0.5 means it rained a little follow me on this guys let's let's go through this okay i mean it rained a little so how do we fix this how do we get this done hmm. so using count would not work and count a is to count text labels right that's count a and count is to count numbers then the only choice we have the only option available is count if and count if sum if average if they all kind of work the same okay and i'll put you through the whole process and I explain the whole thing as we do this now let's go through this numbers of days with rain in a matter so we have equals to count if now let me explain what the count if does the count if will count the numbers of cell within a range that meets the given condition the condition is we don't want to include the days that did not rain we only want to uh, we only want to count numbers of days it rained in january um in number of days it count it rained in i'm coming let's check the question again okay just numbers of days that it rained in each of the town including january and february Okay, nothing was being spe uh, specified, so it means we are counting for all the numbers of days that it rained in each of the three towns, including January and February. So we use a count if. Good. So what is the range? The range is going to be everything here in Amata, right? 
shift control out down now i actually get to out down okay and we have the formula bar here so we don't have to screw up right now comma what they become the criteria now this is where we just have to plan a bit the criteria will be that since zero is it means since zero um, um means it did not rain okay uh could not snow rainfall it simply means that the criteria is going to be watch this with me quote and instead of this quote is going to be greater than zero yes it's going to be greater than zero and this is because it did not rain so anything greater than zero even though it's 0 0.2 even though it's 0 0.3 it means it rained it showered a little there was still rain but if it's zero it means it didn't rain okay and then we can close this to see what happens now at the end of the day we have what 35 so it means the numbers of days it rained both in january and february is 35 and now we can do that for uh bchen and chesmai okay so we have equals to count if what is the range so bchen is going to be this shift control out down comma the criteria is going to be the quote uh, right there greater than what zero okay and for this equals to count if okay rainfall shift control out down comma double quotes greater than what zero So I just want to verify that it's for the rainfall C F and I. Yes. Right? The C F the C F and I. Place in cell D6. That's question five. Listen, we have done that, right? D6. Yes. Okay, question 6. Please in cell D9. Let's look at it. D9. What's D9? D9 is right here. Okay. D9. To calculate the numbers of days with more than, right, 7.5 mm of rain in a matter. Now, this means heavy rainfall, guys, heavy rainfall. So, it simply means that we want to calculate the amount of days that was greater than 7.5. Because we need to know the amount of days it was seriously raining, right, in January and February. So, let's do that. Now, I've already done that for question 5, so obviously that should give you a clue on how to go about that for question 6. That I can see that's why the mark was reduced. So D9 will be equals to count if. Okay. Now this is just for Amata. Okay. So shift control out down everything here. Comma. Now double quote and right here is going to be greater than what 7.5 and then we close it remember the question says what with more than 7.5 am of rain in a matter okay so i'm going to hit on enter and then we just have 10. okay that was when it was really you know there was really a downpour now the next one is 
question 8. So question 7. Place in cell D10. Remember, we call this cell referencing. It's important to always know this. Every time you see it in um, spreadsheet, always making reference to cell. And this is denoted with cell. It's called what cell referencing. That is why D10, and we have a name box that tells you the cell you are currently on. For example, if I click here, it tells me I'm in N4. If I click here, it tells me I'm in M14. So we call that a cell referencing. Okay, so D10. So and D10 is to what? To calculate the average wind speed in a matter in January, rounded up. Can you see that? Rounded up to the nearest knot. So let's do the average speed. So equals to average for January, right? The wind speed. Okay, this is the wind speed for January. So I'll select this, shift, remove my arrow down to look to January 31st. Yes. Close it. Now that's the average. Now the next thing they said rounded up to the nearest knot. Okay. So I'm going to use the rounded up function. Rounded up. And numbers of digits is going to be what? Sadly zero. Because it's to the nearest what? Not. Okay. Which means 15. Now the next thing is. Question 8. Place in cell D11. D11. Okay. Right here. The name box is telling you where it is. In D11. A formula to calculate the numbers of days. With a wind speed of less than five knots in a matter in January. Now, is this all making sense? Right? Because now we're to calculate numbers of days with a wind speed, right? We looked at the average number of calculating number of days with a wind speed of less than five. So what function is coming to your mind? Which formula is coming to your mind? Yes, the count if correct. Okay, so we're going to use equals to the count if. Remember, what are you doing here? You are calculating numbers of days. You are counting. Okay. So they said in January. So count if. Wind speed. So we have this here. And that is shift. Use my arrow. To move it down a bit. Yes. Now, what is going to be my criteria? Let's look at the criteria. They said, with a wind speed of less than 5. Okay, so that's less than 5. And then I can close this. And there we have it. Okay. So there we have it. I'm going to ignore this. We don't need it. Save your spreadsheet. Click on file. Click on save. It's very, very important that we save our work. Now, print your spreadsheet showing the formula. Make sure the rows and column headings are displayed. Okay? The row orientation is landscape. The corner of all cells are fully visible and can be easily read. So, let's do that showing the formulas okay so how we're going to do this um, we're done with this so to do that showing the formulas we're going to click on formulas okay click on formulas and then we're going to click on show formulas okay show formulas and please it is very very important that your formulas are showing now all this it means it's not going to be marked you're going to lose a lot of marks for it because they are cutting off so to do to to fix that real quick is in between the a and b i'm going to click here to select all the columns and rows and in between a and b i'm going to double click to ensure that all the values and labels are currently being seen they are visible and once we have done that we can now print click on file and click on print 
now remember that the rows and column headings are displayed and we have so it was already checked uh, when we're printing um, the values so click on page setup sheets you can see that it's checked here the next thing is the page orientation is landscape which is what we should that's what we did we did the first printout and um, but just in case yours is not like that you can change it here with the orientation to landscape and then again corner of all cells are fully visible and can be easily read I think this is visible for me I can see this so that's fine and there are six pages um, so I'm, I'm okay with this yes I'm, the formulas are showing I want it to be clearly visible like I said when it comes to printing of formulas the pages are just there's no number there's no limit I won't say three pages four pages because your formulas needs to show guys it needs to show it needs to be clearly visible to get your math okay if it's five pages it's six pages then so be it because the most important thing if you try to um, uh, make it two pages the, it, it becomes very very difficult to see and you really want to avoid that okay so I have this so I'm going to click on print and this is going to be my printout too okay so that is done and it's one mark the next thing is print your spreadsheet showing the values so I'm going to take off the formulas right here um, like I think at this point I just have to be careful because of um, the wrap test right um, let's see Let me check the printer one. Yes, it was done where I wanted. Oh, it's fine. So we have this. Um, these are the measurement units down. Is that what is there in the question? I won't be sure, please. Yes. Mm hmm. Okay, um, Okay, I think this is better. I want to ensure that all the dates are shown, which is what I want. Let me see, guys. Was this wrapped? Yes, it was. Hmm. This was wrapped. Okay, this was wrapped. I missed it. Okay. Now, the good news is... Uh, okay, let me see the formulas. Formulas is not an issue. So I I would definitely need to print, do a printer one again because this is cutting off, and that would deny us of our mark. But yes, we can always fix that um, once we're done. Okay, we can always fix that once we're done. Okay. Okay, like I said, it's important to always check. Very very importantly, to always check. All right, so I have that. 
okay so now I'm going to print this I said print your value showing print your special in the values make sure only cell a1 to d11 are displayed a1 to d11 only this they want only this click on file click on print now at this point you're going to change the settings to what print selection okay print selection they want only a1 to d11 okay now the rows and column headings are not displayed so let's change it paste setup sheets uncheck this okay um the page or orientation is portrait it fits on a single page the corner of all cells are fully visible and can be easily read Okay, can you this is here? So this is what is this is just what they need. Okay, this is just the values only, and now I can print this as print out three. Okay, guys, I'm still going to go back to print out one because obviously I you need to have a complete mark, right? And that is why it's important, even when you're done, to still check okay i missed this okay because obviously the whole work is looking like this okay so it's important to always check okay so it's it's not a crime if you make mistake in between but it will be a crime if you submit the work with a mistake so you need to understand that and that's why it's important that you're watching these videos you're observing some notable errors and they are being corrected and so that you don't you don't make those mistakes okay all right um question 11 so let's do question 11 so question 11 so we have this in cell e3 calculate the total win for for chess me for january cell e3 okay so this will this will calculate it. The total rainfall. So I just calculate the total rainfall um, for each of them. So let's do that. All right. So E three here. And we'll calculate the total info for Chesme for January. So let's do that. Total info. So I have for Chesme the info for January. So I'm going to use the sum function. So we have equals to sum. Okay. Now for the info, I have this. Hold my shift and hour down till I get to the end of January 31st. Yes. Then I can close my parenthesis. Okay. Then let's look at it again. In cell E4, this E4 here, calculate the total info for Chasmi for February. So we have equals to sum. Okay. So let's do that for February. So this is from 46. Yes, down to 73. Close it. And we have that. So we have we are done with that. Okay. Now they said create an appropriate chart to compare the average hours of sunshine with the total amount of rainfall for the months of January and February in Chesme. Okay, so we have done the total rainfall for Chesme. We've done the total for, for January and also for February. 
now we're to create a chart to compare the average hours of sunshine so we, what we have to do now is for us to compare we have to find the average hours we don't know the is it here let me see average hours nope it's not here so we have to um create it so i'm what i'm going to do now is just a little bit of just to create my chart okay and i'm going to delete it afterward um, what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to put a title to this so this is going to be um the total rainfall okay i'm going to call this total rainfall okay total rainfall and the other one is what average hours of sunshine okay so this will be what average um, average hours of sunshine okay okay total info and average hours of sunshine okay um so we have this now let's look at for the average hours of sunshine for january because remember we're looking at average hours of sunshine with the total amount so for january and then for february so let's do that so for the average hours for the average hours i have equals to average okay for the average hours i have equals to have average For January, so I have average here. So select shift, then my arrow down. Okay, close it. Okay, I'm going to use one decimal point. This is average, just use a one decimal point, it's fine. Then for February, equals to average for the sunshine. So this will be. 46 yes down to 73 so we have this okay now we, we can now create a chart an appropriate chart i'm going to use a line graph and i'm going to explain for good reasons why i want to use the line graph because we'll talk about your comparing right between um weathers um forecasting the average line uh, especially when you have to do with temperature and all the rest the, the line graph is usually suitable for that okay it makes more sense to know which point which point they're going to which point which point they're going to and um that makes it that makes it better okay so now to do this this is what i'm going to do now i'm going to click outside of it then click on insert okay and right here i have the line graph and i'm going to select this one that has a point okay now you discover that it has a blank um, graph yes we're going to do it manually so i'm going to right click on it then click on select data and under the legend series right i want to give it i want to give a name for it so under the legend series I'm going to put um, the first one I'm going to select will be for the average they said what to compare the average hours of sunshine so I'm going to select the average this is the series name okay and um, this is the data okay and um, I noticed that we have a legend here and um, let me see okay so we have this okay so we have this and we have one two we're going to fix it real quick once we're done with that so the next one you can see that it uh, is there once we add the legends to it um the next one is the total amount of rainfall now to do that i'm going to right click on it click on select data and i'm going to add right the series name is total okay you can type it you can decide to just select on it whichever one and I'll go backspace it. The values is going to be this. And I have this. Okay. So, um, okay. So I have this. Hmm. 
it's not really giving us what we want is it okay let's see set the month as the category as is so let me do that the month um okay this is for horizontal so this is going to be uh, the month okay and this is going to be for right click select data i'm going to edit this and this is going to be for january and february okay okay so we have this now let's go ahead they said set the average hours of sunshine as the primary value as is and the rainfall as the secondary value as is okay so let's do that so what we're going to do is that now notice that in excel for your chart at default you only have a primary what value axis now we want to have a secondary so how do we do this we're going to select the secondary which is this which is for total hours right click on it and then we're going to go to what uh, format data series now under format data series you're going to see that it's seen as the primary axis we don't want that we want the um the average to be the uh, primary and we want the total to be the secondary hope you're getting it okay if i'm too fast you can always put a replay on it over and over again so we're selecting the total as the secondary which is what the question is saying okay as the secondary um the way for as the secondary value as is and of course the average as the primary value as is so i'm going to select the secondary here and um we have that okay so we have this now moving on set the rainfall axis to have a maximum value of 100 millimeters okay it needs to have what 100 millimeters so what i'm going to do is i'm still going to edit this to make it um in millimeters okay because that's the total rainfall um the total rainfall is going to be in millimeters so i, I think i will do that so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to click on the secondary value as is right click on it click on format axis then change the minimum to zero okay to zero so we have um and the increment let's see um format as this the increment is major of 10 which is 10 20 30 40 which is okay um by me so we have 10 20 40 to 100 so the maximum is in 100 okay so now what do we do now is we need to add the axis for it okay to add the axis for it so we do click on here which is the chart element the axis type to now notice that we have the primary vertical and then we now have the secondary vertical so i'm going to do this and do this okay so we have this okay and of course we need to add it have a chat type to as well which is very very important so i'm going to add my chat type to, to it okay So this is going to be what the average average hours of sunshine and this is going to be what control A total rainfall in millimeters just gonna do this okay uh millimeters okay so we have it in millimeters okay so we have that okay so we have this right here um for the average hours of sunshine I think I can just make this it's not a crime it's not a crime to make it bold and um, make it black it's not a crime right <laughs> all right so we have this all 
okay now we need to add a legend for it so i'm going to put out my legend right here i need my legend to be on the bottom yeah so total in four i'm going to put this here in mm now automatically it's going to change here okay now the next thing i'm going to do right now is the title right so the title is going to be let's look at the question title is going to be what to compare right so it's going to be comparison comparison of what rainfall okay rainfall comparison of rainfall and sunshine okay we're comparing rainfall and sunshine in January, okay, and of course February. Hope I'm spelling February correctly. Yes, in chess me. Um, in chess me. Let's see February. Yes, it's correct. All right. I can make this black it's not a crime okay all right so we have this now i'm going to drag this a bit so we have um the length of this okay so we have this okay they said um fully label the chart so i've done that there's a chart type two um there's a primary value axis there's a secondary um, value axis um the category axis is here for january and then for february okay so the it shows you for january to february january for february and um january to february and of course um sorry january to february for rainfall this for rainfall and for the average we have um for january and then we have for february okay which is fine all right, so we've done this. The next thing is save your chart. Save. Place a copy of your chart in your evidence document. A copy of that chart in the evidence document. So I'm going to right click, copy it. Now this is going to be my evidence one. Okay, so what's our special evidence one? okay so this is fine or you could right click on it make like this make it a picture is a picture okay okay i'll just place it as a picture okay place it as a picture and um right here on picture format and i i can increase the width of it so that it becomes very legible for all to see want to see this yes okay let me see okay i think uh, i'll delete this and i'll paste it as um using the formatting i think this is this is clear i prefer this um format increase the width of it hmm. let me see undo no okay, guys i'll go with the picture guys so it's easier for me to just do this yeah the picture is okay the picture is okay so i can increase the width yes that's much better so it's clear everybody can see this and um from this to four yeah uh, it's good to go yeah it's good to go okay so there we have it now and that is the end of it now there's one thing we did not do okay i'm going to save this there's one thing we did not do and we're just going to do that real quick and that is just to wrap we missed that okay so what I'm going to do right now is so as not to disrupt all this, I'm just going to do a save as real quick. Okay. 
and I'll just put um, okay maybe one okay so that I can take all this off right the chart is there so I can just take this all this off um, yeah and go back to it the first one yes this right here we can take all those values off no worries this is a copy of it so you need not fear okay so we have this because we didn't do this now let me show you the first printout um it was an oversight so we're having this i wish it was not it's not good enough right so we need to have this um okay so we have this yep yeah, i just want to make sure that is the same i'm not missing anything average hour per month chess me okay so all this the units are there town date okay so yes i can go ahead and print okay so file print and then um let's sorry go back for it let me see it's very important you look at it very closely so you don't make any mistake uh, yep dates okay everything looks good all right align and this has been applied 16 point to 13 and 1 so yes print click on file click on print so print especially showing the values um, orientation this is going to be active active cell rules and color headings are displayed so I'm just going to put that sheet rules and color headings content of all cells are fully visible so yes this is done and which is 11 marks in total 10 and the printing um, so yes everything is okay so now I can print nope it's not okay I'm having room for here down This is why it's important to always check guys it's important to always check your work then i can print this to print out one okay which was print out one and um, i can replace it and there we have it so that is done um, that has been replaced so what i did was just do copy I, i'm going to delete this i'm going to delete that copy of the excel work because everything has been done i just wanted to just um, ensure that it looks exactly uh, like it so if you look at it um, you will see that they are the same right and there are spaces in between because i told you about the grid lines that needs to be added and so everything looks everything looks good and um, with this we have come to the end of this paper it's been long yes but i needed to explain all these things mistakes made mistakes fixed so that you know how this works and how you can get the maximum mark in your exam without any form of um error so thank you very very much and please don't forget 
don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel it's called a gyrotech and trust me this youtube channel is loaded okay i'm talking about um people one people two people three all in playlists just to give you the very very best trust me this youtube channel is a giveaway you'll be doing your friend your friend a solid by sharing this um this youtube channel with your classmates with your friends that are preparing for igcc ict and trust me it will be the best gift you're giving to them so click on the subscribe button and i'll see you in my next video bye bye